You're listening to a podcast from DigitalOilAndGas.com. My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm joined today by a friend and colleague of mine, Chris Ballum. Chris, welcome to uh, the podcast. Thank you. My pleasure being here, Jeff. And today's uh, discussion will be around a topic that is uh, high in the media, but not something that I've actually devoted too much attention to at Digital Oil & Gas, uh, which is the world of cyber and uh, the changes in um, the tax that uh uh, actors are taking against our infrastructure, the, you know, the impact that it's having, and, and what the future looks like for cyber world, and then the consequence, of course, is for oil and gas companies, what can we actually do about it? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, there's a lot uh, going on there. <laughs> there's a lot going on. And so at first, let's begin with your, your, uh, your background, because I know that you've devoted your career to yeah. this question of Ab- cyber issues. Absolutely. So. Uh, you know, I, I came originally from a business background mm-hmm. where it was um, kind of getting into cybersecurity at a school, into identity management. And, and where, where was that? What, what part of the world was that in? Uh, originally from New Brunswick, uh, University of New Brunswick, and then, you know, made my way to Calgary. So based in Calgary for the last 15 years um, and focused with identity management, which led into energy trading and risk management, and then ultimately uh, some cloud and cloud security applications. And into my role now, where it is, um, you know, on the front lines of cybersecurity, everything from managing incidents through uh, doing penetration testing and vulnerability assessment. Uh, really, um, the growth in cyber over the last five to ten years has been so exponential. Mm. Uh, the industry has changed fundamentally to keep up with it. Yeah, and so what what has changed in the last seven years? You know, well, there's, uh, I mean, aside from it's it's much more prominent in the news, right? But uh, us, yeah, what's 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 going on that that might not be obvious to the those of us who are not deep into cyber? Certainly, I mean, people people hear all these rumors all the time, and they think, is that true? Yeah, it, most mm. of it, if not all of it, is true. Absolutely, the volume has increased. Uh, the, the sophistication of attacks, the sophistication of attackers, the sophistication of the technology that they use. Uh, has all gotten dramatically better. So, uh, mm. you know, for volume, sheer volume, you've got a lot of automation now. You've got advanced persistent threats that are self-propagating. So these are computers attacking computers? These is that what you're talking about? automated bots or botnets or attacks that may have been set off and forgot about. And so the so the image I might have, which is some, some sort of um, guy in a hoodie in his basement typing away on a keyboard, might might be misplaced. This uh, is... You're right. First of all, that exists. Absolutely. <laughs> is it the majority? No. You're seeing right. the volume is being driven by nation states. It's being by you know hacktivist groups that are well funded from major, the major players are the countries that you think that they are. You know, I won't get into the details, but mm-hmm. you're right. The, that volume and the funding behind it has led to incredible development. But the script kiddies, the guys in the basement, the disgruntled employees, you know, people that are just searching the dark web marketplace and buying for ten dollars, you know, a, a DOS attack. They they exist. They're real people. Sorry, what what, what is DOS? Uh, so a denial of service attack is a pretty common one, and that's where you're flooding someone's network. You're overloading their computers and their IPs so that they shut down. You know, just a pure traffic, break the dam and have the flood come in. And does that happen in, I mean, I'm thinking about my, the, the companies who would be uh, most interested in the topic of digital oil and gas would be oil and gas companies. So yeah. would an exploration and production company actually ever experience a denial of service attack? Certainly. Anyone that's operating critical infrastructure has the ability to be susceptible or vulnerable to this. And you why, see it, why would anybody attack a you know a tank farm or a, like a, 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 a pump jack somewhere out in some farmer's field? Well, I mean, if it's the goal is to bring down a website or the goal is to... to um, you know, impact business and production operations. Mm. Um, you can do it from multiple different ways. So there could be a, it could be a motivation there, or it could be uh, to drag someone's name through the mud. You know, the the publicly, oh, you got hacked. Well, there were two. Actually, there's been two hacks just in the past week. Boeing announced that they've had a uh, an incident, yes. Yes. Uh, and then the city of Atlanta is undergoing a ransomware attack. Yes, they are. So yeah. in theory, I guess uh, someone. With a with a an axe to grind, or maybe an economic motivation, could hold critical infrastructure in oil and gas to ransom. Is that what that means? Honestly, a lot of people tell me if you're an executive, you're an oil and gas executive, what keeps you up at night? It's exactly that scenario where they say, um, I have someone come in through an OT environment, through my instrumentation, or through some vulnerability from a PLC that's 30 years old that mm. never had any security when it was designed, uh, and someone can control a valve. And they turn the valve and it mm. causes an explosion, you know, and, and unfortunately that's a very real possibility in oil and gas in OT environments. Has it ever happened? 
you know, there's kind of a, in the industry, a lot of people, I think, have the attitude, it hasn't happened yet, so it's not one of the chances it happens to me. And I think that's maybe a faulty attitude. You have to protect yourself, certainly in your environment, in your networks. Um, there have been many uh, incidents around the world, uh, globally, that if you have critical infrastructure and you've been targeted and something happens, are they resulting in fatalities? You know, I don't know all the numbers, but they certainly can and they certainly have. Hmm. I've heard of, of uh, incidences in Europe where, say, uh, state actors have gone after power infrastructure, for instance. Exactly. Um, but I have not. I mean, oil and gas, as, as we add more and more technology to oil and gas, it stands to reason that that technology is going to become more and more of someone's target. It, it needs to be managed. It needs, like we talked about, uh, you know, what can you do? And you need to have a management strategy around everything from your endpoints through your networks, through your third-party liabilities, your customers. Mm -hmm. Someone else has been compromised, but they have access to your network. Then your network is in, in danger of being compromised. Mm -hmm. So how do you have those strategies in place? And have you seen any, um, you, know, you know, I know we can't talk about real companies and and, and so forth. Uh, name na can't name names, obviously, but are, can you, can you, can, are there some, some examples of things that you might call attention to? You know, so some real case studies or use cases of uh, where hackers have uh, attacked some, you know, some industrial infrastructure and then left left a uh, trail of woe behind them. Absolutely. I mean, the uh, there are several methods, many different methods and new ones being developed all the time for social engineering aspects where people are trying to hack into networks via you know, spear phishing attacks or impersonating people's voices. Sorry, wait, sorry what is spear phishing? What does that mean? Uh, I, like I know what it is if I'm in the Caribbean, but... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and probably the more the better version is in Caribbean. Um, phishing is something people are pretty familiar with. An email, clicking on a link, and it compromises or takes you to a different website, and they steal your information. A spear phishing is the exact same thing, but it's targeted. Whereas a phishing email might go out to... A wide net. A spear phishing is targeted at an individual or an organization. Oh, so if I get if I get an email message that's directed to me personally, say, "Hey Jeff, your invoice is ready for inspection. Click here." They could be looking that at could, that's yeah. a spear phishing attack. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like Got we, it. There's several examples of executives and CEOs being targeted like that, and also finding their vacation schedule so that they know the CEO is down in Mexico, and then they instigate a spear phishing attack, and they can do multiple methods. You know, things like that happen. But, you know, is that, a, is that an OT environment threat? No, that's more IT or, or process admin kind of style stuff. Um, on the OT side, it's the fastest growing threat vector that I'm seeing. So, you know, 600% increase in things like crypto mining or attacks on SCADA networks or any of the, any of the field or operational technology networks. It's, it's increasing dramatically. So I want to drill a little bit down on the on the crypto mining thing. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to learn more about that. I mean, the there there are crypto mining businesses now opening up in Alberta. Yeah. Um, but it would seem to me that those are legitimate businesses. Absolutely. So, where is the cyber issue associated with um, either a, a sort of a business that's not a, doing crypto mining? Uh, where, where, sure. where is that? Where's that issue lie? So it's more from uh, so I'm again sticking with the critical infrastructure. Mm. It's actually into the water and wastewater treatment, and this was in uh, in the UK recently. So we can talk about this. Um, a wastewater treatment plant facilities network was compromised for quite some time, like I think a matter of months, where a malicious threat had come in and been able to bypass the system security and lay dormant but utilize the computing power and the resources of the, you know, the very large uh, servers and computer facilities at the wastewater treatment plant to mine Monero and to mine cryptocurrency because obviously crypto mining is a very computer intensive activity. Mm. So they're riding for free. They're mining for free off someone else's, you know, they're piggybacking on somebody else's uh, energy costs. So, so cyber where we, where the media might talk about, or we might see a media story about cyber involving the theft of identities and credit cards and so forth. What you're saying is that the theft of computer cycles and the electricity that's, you know, being burned to drive that 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 computer infrastructure, um, and 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 using that stolen time to mine for cryptocurrencies is itself a kind of cyber attack, cyber theft. One of the fastest growing. One of the fastest. Yeah. Wow. It's, you know, cyber is such a momentum. You know, they people people get an idea or they see something and they say, "I want to do. I can do that too," and it explodes. You know, now mm -hmm. everyone's trying to 
compromised critical infrastructure so they can mine for Monero or, or other cryptocurrencies. Right. right? So, and it can, it, it does that software will run on all kinds that that mining software can run on all kinds of different computers. It's pretty versatile. Yeah. It's very versatile. So the idea that's so, so if someone Your out there is thinking, Your home computer could yeah, be yeah. compromised for mining. If that's where you're going, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly true. where I'm going. No, what I'm thinking about is, is uh, you know, the, the, a lot of the process technologies in oil and gas are Intel processor based. Yeah. And while the older equipment may be on a more obscure chipset where the the technology may not run so so effectively, the modern uh, equipment that's installed, PLCs, controllers, and so forth, many of them are Intel-based, and therefore this technology, the mining technology of itself, runs neatly on on Intel. Might might very well run on your PLC. Absolutely possible, yeah. And it, uh, you know, I, one of the things I wanted to to mention was patching. Make sure you're doing your patching. You know, if a, if a vulnerability is released by Cisco, I saw today uh, 8.5 million Cisco switches have a vulnerability and they're connected to the Internet right now. They have an open port, essentially. Mm. So this vulnerability has existed. So Cisco has made the patch public. But as soon as um, like or the new iOS or Microsoft, they release uh, patches and upgrades, you have to do them immediately because that is also going out to the hacker community. They now know there's a patch so they can exploit that flaw. For anyone who hasn't patched or upgraded yet, and it's just polling. They're, they're just scanning the internet looking for who has the beacon up of, come hack me. Mm. I haven't done the upgrade yet. I haven't yet. done the upgrade. Yeah. I remember reading about a story where uh, so- someone, for the fun of it, put a toaster on the internet yeah. uh, to see how long it would take for a bot to discover that the toaster was... Uh, visible to the internet and was vulnerable to hacking and, and it, it was, was measured seconds. in it was measured in seconds it yeah it was measured it didn't take long at all in an hour it had 45 hack attempts or something yeah, yeah. i've seen well just to, to elaborate on that any connected device any any smart home connected device like thermostats refrigerators if it's connected it's a vulnerability and so, you know, so, the, so the simple answer for uh someone in oil and gas might be i'm going to uh block all of my infrastructure from talking to the internet i'm simply going to air gap it as, mm-hmm. as, as they would say in other words the that plc that's in the control room that's managing this particular pump i'm not going to connect it to the internet and um, that seems less and less of a plausible strategy in an era where uh the you know the 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 um, software that comes with new plcs assumes there's an internet connection yeah, never assume. That's usually a pretty good rule of thumb. <laughs> um, you're you're right. It, it's a it's an arrow in the quiver. You know, it's it's a piece of the puzzle. You need to have a, a more holistic security yeah. strategy, and that includes yep. appliances like firewalls and anti malware and all of the consumer products. But really, network access control, doing an inventory of what you have, that's mm-hmm. a good first step. Like, let's run some stuff that will tell me everything that's connected to my network. Are and companies doing this, and then? discovering there's stuff connected to their network they didn't know they was didn't there. know about, yeah or they never knew about or how do you know if someone connects to your network tomorrow like how like you've got an inventory today it's a snapshot are you monitoring that yeah i suppose the, the parallel for me in my house would be uh, there's probably appliances plugged in that i don't know that are plugged in your house probably little, your little, house yeah <laughs> a little drawn electricity right yeah you don't even know they're there but yeah. uh, they're they're uh, they they are a uh, an, an item now on your your in this case a power grid. But you know you could easily see the same thing. Yeah, they a probably smartphone. have a default password that was a manufacturer zero 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 or one one one. Yeah, and, uh, and you know if you've got public and private keys, and if you can find these public keys and back into a system, you know that guy hacks into your coffee maker, but he also then connects to your home network, which is connected to your phone, and then you go into work the next day. And your phone connects to your work network, and you've compromised your work environment. Potentially, you've created a tunnel yeah. all the way from your home network. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So for an executive, that's something to impact because you probably have a lot of control. Or if you're an administrator and you've got admin control, right. you have to be hardening your environments. Harden your home network. Harden your OT environment. You know, Only allow the people that you know are supposed to be on it. Block everything else. Is that what you mean by hardening? Hardening so or keep <clears throat> keep, keep uh, parts of uh, your network, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, set aside that such that they are not uh, uh, able to be compromised. So my these login IDs are secret; they never get revealed. That sort of thing. Yeah, I, I have segregated environments. Have uh, the ability to. I know we talked about whitelisting. I don't want to mention the term, but it is you know setting up a, a list of approved IPs, approved people who can talk and the traffic. And if it's anything outside of the approved, shut it down. Yeah, or set up a, a, 
a quarantine or test environment or like a sandbox mm. Mm. where you can go into that before it goes into production. I can anticipate though, just thinking about this, as we add more and more devices to you know the, the industrial internet of things, that way as that wave unfolds, we add more and more devices to the internet because we can, because the chipsets are cheap, the power is cheap. It's sensors effective. are cheap. It's effective. Creates there's efficiencies. Bi- there's real business yeah. value there. We're at the same time we're enabling a uh, future uh, disaster if we're not actually thinking through how the you know the, how, how might a a more criminally minded uh, individual or or agent um, look at that same business efficiency and say this is how I can make money or how I can steal yeah. from this. You this know. is my open door. My open door. Yeah. yeah. And so so what are people mm-hmm. trying to do outside of the scenario where you've got critical infrastructure that could explode? or someone that is a malicious, I want to bring down production. Mm. What else are people trying to hack into you for? You know, they, they could go into the OT environment or the IT environment. Ultimately, they're trying to get sensitive information. They're trying to get the crown jewels of whatever your company has, yeah. whether it's financial data or personal data. Yeah, we've talked about money. We've talked about stealing IDs. We've talked about uh, stealing computer cycles, stealing yeah. electricity. Yeah. There's a lot of possibilities lot here that, that people It's also after. the third party. I think a lot of people forget that. Um, they may not be after you or your company might be nothing that to them, but you have one customer who happens to be a major oil and gas company because you provide a service or you provide transportation or you provide something mm. where they can go through your company ultimately to get into their end into target. their company. Yeah. yeah. So there's a third party liability risk that as, a, as anyone, you have to be aware of, of the repercussions for that, you know, protect yourself so that you can, you know, not be a, a, a part of the liability in this big roadmap. Mm. So if I had to, if I had to provide her uh, some uh, s- a few simple steps about uh, that uh, companies might do to uh, allow them to achieve this more hardened environment and uh, you know uh, provide some greater assurance over their uh, their infrastructure. You know, what, what 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 would you suggest? What 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 three things really come to mind straight away? Three things. Okay. I mean, right at the top, I think I'm going to use the term endpoint to be a really overarching term and say endpoint is everything from phones through laptops, through instrumentation, you know, any endpoint that you have as a device, uh, to figure out what that is, what's on your network today. So fi- just go find them, find, just find them, them, do an inventory and then them. manage them. All right. Yeah. Do right. an inventory and then have a strategy in place so that you're using top tier technology that's going to be giving you uh, visibility and transparency, the yeah. ability to remote wipe these devices, the, the ability to recover the information. You have to have an endpoint strategy. Right. Um, I would say a, a SIM technology, uh, S-I-E-M, SIM technology, um, is something that probably you need to manage and, and, and watch your traffic, your log traffic, and... And you're looking for what? In sort you're looking of for abno- anomalies. Or anomalies yeah. on there. Yeah. It kind of goes back to I, like under hardening your environment. You really you set up the regular processes. You do baselining for a few months. So you know what is accepted, and then um, if something's outside of those parameters, you have to have you rules have flag, in place yeah. to deal yeah. with it. You flag it, and you sure. get an alert system. Yep. And honestly, I think a managed service is the way to go for that. A lot of companies don't want to make the uh, infrastructure investment. It's expensive and then manage the infrastructure, but it's the time, the talent. There's not enough people in cybersecurity, uh, mm. so the talent is very hard to find. So you go to a company that can do that and, and you have them explore and manage 24 by 7, you know, because it's, it's a very resource intensive thing. Mm. Uh, and then for a third one, I mean, I it's best practices. It's... It's more of your day-to-day activities. Like you can harden any environment as much as you want, but if a guy clicks on the link, he opens the he opens the file. You know, he op- <laughs> he, he, he executes whatever they've yep. been sending him. Yep. All the systems in the world are, you know, hopefully will catch it. But the human element is what you have to wrap under control. You have to say where are the threat's coming from. The yep. human element so is the number one. So awareness and training awareness and, and so training. forth. Right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's a very good note to end on. So, and, and Chris, I have to say, I'm glad you're on our side, not well, the other side. Thank you. It's, a, it's been a pleasure <laughs> speaking. I, I certainly welcome these type of conversations because it's educational. Let's get the word out there that it's not just in the movies. One of the best things I see is that people say, it can't be like that in real life. I saw it in a movie. It can't be like that. I think movies are are not doing it justice like it's crazier the movie is just scratching the surface it's way crazier than that so well, you know, let's be prepared. Get, I, I don't want to appear in any movies so <laughs> let's, let's leave it at that yeah. thanks very much chris appreciate you coming by thank you sir you've been listening to a podcast from digital oil and gas if you uh, like this uh, po- uh, podcast and publication uh, please uh, click a like button and share this with your friends and uh, visit us at uh, digitaloilandgas.com